Hello friends, um, today's the day that I'm going to explain uh, all the essential elements of music theory in less than 30 minutes. There's a challenge for you, okay? Now, there's two halves to music theory. There's how music is written down and there's how it's organised. For most people, to start with, how music is organised is far more important. So we're going to put how it's written down to one side and concentrate on the organisation thing. Now, this is a note. Now, as most of you probably know, sound is caused by vibration. The faster vibration, the higher the note. The slower the vibration, the lower the note. So if you, for example, double the frequency of that note, you get that one. If you halve the frequency of that note, you get that one. Now, if you look at the piano keyboard, you will notice that there's a certain symmetry, a certain pattern to the whole thing, that there's these repeating patterns of uh, two black notes, three black notes, two black notes, three black notes. And those are divided up every time you double the frequency. The distance between that one and that one, at the same point in the pattern, is called an octave. Okay? And that's because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? The white, there's eight white notes. If you then take that octave, we then divide it into 12 equal steps to get all the black and the white notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay? Now, the distance between any one note and the next note up or down is called a half step. That's half step. Two half steps make a whole step, as you could probably work out. So if we go one, two, that to that is a whole step. That's a whole step. Okay, so half step, whole step, semitone, tone. Hang on, I can't go on talking about that note and this note. We need to start giving notes some names. And thanks to a, a sixth century Roman philosopher called Bothius, we can do that. He thought, what a wonderful idea. Allegedly, he was the first to come up with this, but he thought, what a great idea to give these uh, notes names, uh, which are letters. So that one is called A. Take a wild guess at what that one's called. B, exactly. C, D, E, F, G. Now, when we get back to A uh, to the um, octave, we call that one A again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. All the way up. So all these are A's, all these are B's, all these are C's. Okay. Ah, what was that? Yes, the black notes. What are we going to call those? Okay, start on this one, go a half step up. What's that called? It's called G sharp. If you go up half a step, that's G. Go up half a step, you get G sharp. What happens if you go down? You get G flat. So you go half a step down, you get the flat note. Half a step up, you get the sharp note. That one's called D. Go up half a step, we get... Correct, D sharp. Go down half a step, we get... Correct, D flat. Ah, well spotted. What happens if we play A and go down half a step? A flat. Okay. Fine. What happens if you play G and go up half a step? You get the same note, but it's called G sharp. So that note can be either G sharp or A flat. It's not actually that complicated to get your head around. It's like if you wanted to get to North Street and somebody said, how'd you get there? You go, oh, go down East Street and turn right. Or you might say, ah, oh, no, go up Church Street and turn left. You're getting to the same place, you're just getting there by different routes. And it's very similar. So half a step up um, from G to G sharp, half a step down from A to A flat, and G sharp and A flat turn out to be exactly the same note. So we know what an octave is, we know how it's divided up, and we know how to name notes. Next question. What is a scale and why does it matter? That probably sounds hauntingly familiar to you. What are you listening to, though, when you're hearing that scale? What makes that sound like a major scale? The answer is it's the pattern of intervals. That's all a scale is. So if you play, starting anywhere on the keyboard, um, uh, intervals start, you start on the bottom and you go whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, it will sound like a major scale. It's a pattern of of intervals. Start on C, go up a whole step, another whole step, then a half step, then three more whole steps, one, two, three, and a half step. 
Whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Shoo! Start anywhere and it will sound in a different place, but it will still be recognisably a major scale. Start, for example, on G. Whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, whole step. Ah! Don't panic! We can't go to um, that F because we need to go up a whole step, so we have to go to F sharp and then fi finish off with a half step there. So in order to play a scale of G major, we have to use an F sharp. And F sharp is what is known as the key signature of the scale of G major. In other words, you can't play G major without an F sharp. That is what key signatures are. Uh, they define what you need in order to be able to play that scale. Take another one, for example. Um, start on D. Whole step, whole step to F sharp, half step, whole step, whole step, ah. Another whole step takes us to C sharp. So in order to play the scale of D major, we have to use an F sharp and a C sharp. So we have to use two sharps to play um, the scale of D major, and that means the key signature D major has got two sharps in it, F sharp and C sharp. Simple as that. Okay? So far, so good. Now, you've probably heard of major and minor. What is all this major and minor stuff about? Well, <coughs> they're just different scales and they're just different patterns of intervals. So we know that a major scale goes whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, or tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. A minor scale just has a different pattern of um, intervals, which gives it its characteristic feeling. So starting on A, uh, let's go whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. Then we're going to whole step, half step, whole step again, whole step, half step, whole step, and then a whole step, okay? That is the natural minor scale. And if you started playing um, that sequence, a pattern of intervals, anywhere on the keyboard, you get a natural minor. Now, you may have noticed we, made, we managed to play that whole natural minor scale without using any black notes. Okay, so it has the A minor has the same key signature as C major. They're like sort of non-identical twins, and they're known. So A minor is the relative minor of C major. They're sort of locked together because they share the same key signature, and therefore they sort of share the same scale. So far, so good. OK, so we've done major and minor scales, and um, we've done all kinds of other stuff, key signatures. Let's just compare a major and a minor scale, because I want to talk about intervals. Intervals are the distance between two notes on the keyboard. So from there to there is an interval, from there to there is an interval. So if we play C major scale, okay, if I then play C natural minor, going whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, you'll notice, first of all, just concentrate on the first three notes, okay, and the major scale it goes in the minor scale, it goes... So, what are we going to call the interval between that note and that note? That, that to that is called a major third, because if you go up the major scale, one, two, three, three notes, you get to that note. If you've got the minor scale, you get to that note, and the distance between that note and that note is called a minor third, okay? So a major third is made up of you go up, effectively, four half steps. Look, you go one, two, three, four. And if you go to a minor third, it's three half steps. One, two, three. Now, but when we get beyond the third, four and five are the same in both major and minor. And that's why those intervals, that's a fourth. It's called a perfect fourth, because it's the same in both major and minor. And that one is a perfect fifth, because it's the same in major and minor. And then you get mi then you get major and minor thirds and seven oh uh, sixths and sevenths as well. So, but that is a minor third. That's a major third. This is important because the next thing we're talking about is chords. Chords are simply playing sort of more than one note in a, uh, at a time. An interval is normally two notes, and the chord is normally three or more. So, if we start on the first note of the scale, the root, that's C. Now try playing, try this at home if you haven't done it already, 
the third and the fifth note of the scale. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So play one, skip one, play one, skip one, play one. And what you get is a three note chord called a triad. And that triad is known as C major because it's the chord formed on C and it's a major chord because the distance between the root and the middle note is a major third. Now if we go up one note, what's the distance between that one and that? It's not a major third, it's a minor third. So that is D minor, okay? C major, D minor. And if you look, okay, so we're going one, two, three, four semitones or half steps up, and you get a major third. You build that into a chord and you get a major chord. Start on D, you only go up one, two, three semitones. So you get a minor third is the interval there. So you get a minor chord. So the pattern in a major scale, you can form a triad on each degree of the scale. So that's chord one, <coughs> chord two, chord three, chord four, chord five. Okay. Um, so that's how chord one, chord five, chord six, chord four. C major, that's G. That's a chord of G major. Then go up to A minor, which is chord six, because it's the sixth note of the scale. And that's chord four, because it's on the fourth note of the scale. There's a wonderful diagram which brings this all together. This may make your brain explode, but I'm going to do it anyway. Here is a fantastic diagram which explains how all this relates to each other. Um, you'll need to look at it for a bit because it, ta it takes a little while to get your head around. But look, right at the top there um, is, uh, th uh, is C. Now, as we know, you can play a C major scale without any black notes, there's no accidentals in it, there's, so there's no, no sharps or flats. If you go up to the fifth note of the scale, okay, you get to G. Now, when we try and play a major scale based on G, as we explained before, we have to use one sharp. If you go up to the fifth note of the scale of G, you end up on D. Now we play a major scale, you have to use both F sharp and C sharp. Every time you go up a fifth, you have to add a sharp to the key signature. In all, and it's just down to that pattern of intervals we were talking about before. So every time you go one uh, tick round to clockwise, so it starts on C with no um, sharps, goes to G with one sharp, goes to D with two sharps, goes to A with three sharps, goes to E with four sharps. Now, what about going down? If we start on C and go to the left anti-clockwise, we go down a fifth, we end up on F. Now, to make a, a scale of F, we go tone, tone, semitone, and this time we're going to call that B flat, not A sharp. So if you go to the left, you're going to the flat side, and every time you go one step to the left, you add a flat. So F major has one flat in it, B flat, which is the next one to the right, has two flats in it, E flat has three flats in it. Now, the closer two things are um, in the circle of fifths like this, the more closely they are uh, related. You can add another circle to the circle of fifths, which is inside, which is all the uh, re relative minors. So you can see how those relative minors, those are the minor scales with the same key signature as the major scale. Okay, So C major has no sharps or flat, A minor has no sharps or flat. G major has one sharp, E minor has one sharp. Okay. This probably is a bit much to take in all in one go, but do have a look at this and you can download, there's a sort of a little crib sheet we've put together which will explain all this, everything I've said in here, so you can look at it on a piece of paper and go, oh, what did that nice guy say and how does it work? Okay, you can look at it. That was really rude, you don't sound like that, do you? No, of course you don't, I'm sorry. Um, but it will allow you to work stuff out.